Hello and welcome to another Wardy's Waffle Farm update. Hope you've all had a good week. We haven't got any land work done this week at all. We have had rain virtually every day, I think, so it's making life just a bit tricky. But we've got a lot of crops to get in the ground. We've got um, spring beans, barley, uh, sugar beet and oats. But a lot of it's on heavy ground, so we've got to just wait um, until uh, until the conditions are right so we can't get that, that uh, in the ground just yet. But we've got to be patient, but it'll be okay. Um, it'll be fine when we get, to get going with it. Anyway, we've got various clips for you around the farm uh, this week. Clips from inside the workshop. Very Various things we've been doing, but there's three main things we've been uh, doing. We've finished the sugar beet into Newark factory, which I'm really pleased about. Uh, you saw it lifted um, early on uh, in the week uh, on Wednesday's update, but this time now I'm going to be showing you the factories, sorry, the lorries delivering it into the factory. Got it all finished now, which I'm really pleased about being a difficult uh, difficult term season uh, with the sugar beet. So we're looking at that. Also, sad times that the house that I was uh, brought up in, uh, part of Ledham Estate, part of the farm um, that, uh, that I rent on an agricultural holdings app tenancy, um, that's been sold. Um, and uh, so we have a quick look at that. I, I was sort of brought up there and spent my whole life there. So we'll take a look at that. If you're not interested in that, please just skip on. It's only about three or four minutes looking inside the house and outside as well. Um, but it is also the house I'm living in here now is Rhonda. This is also part of uh, the farm and part of the, the, uh, the tenancy. But I explain that in the video. And then also I go into one of the schools in Lincoln and do a lot of work with um, Birchwood Junior School and talk to the children about food and farming. Take a tractor there as well and look at a wildlife area that they're doing and I'm helping with so it's really really good I really enjoy that anyway that's it uh, for the intro hope you enjoy it and all being well we'll see you at the end look what we've just seen out the back of the house three deer So we've got more sugar beet going this morning. We've got a lorry just coming down the track here. Tom's just started the cleaner. So we'll just flick the camera around and, and have a look. But this is the last of the sugar beet we've got. Thank goodness it's been a difficult, tricky season with the factory slowing down intake and the frost and everything as well. So yeah, I'm glad to get this out of the way. Nala's having a breakfast. She loves chewing sugar beet. I think all dogs do. See the amount of soil dropping out. So it's doing a good job. opening the back door so we can see in. There we are. So the copper chain When you look at this, there's a lot of tops in this as well, but a lot of loose soil. There is some small chippings of beet like that, little bits of bog, but generally the amount, you can see there, there's small chip of beet drop out, but not many, but it does so much good. been a difficult season with the frost and new at factory slowing down the throughput which meant we've had beat in the ground for longer so it's been a tricky season so I'm pleased it's uh, it's over with or soon will be this clean is fairly old but you can see it's doing its job over the lorries Frankie's enjoying the breakfast in the morning I love sugar beet 
I've just popped into my local Asda uh, in Newark and we've just been looking at sugar beet uh, on this update and I just thought I'd come and see the sugar section see what we've got and it's brilliant because here they are only selling silver spoon sugar which is made from English sugar beet and uh, I don't know whether it says yeah it says grown in Britain on the back up there which is what we're looking for not as Tate and I'll say produced in Britain which is sugar cane that's just packed here so anyway um, yeah these are the one you want, ladies and gents. Silver spoon, always, because that is made from English sugar beet. I thought we'd got the ambicopter flying over the village, looking for somebody, but we haven't. It's an electricity helicopter checking pylons and wires. It's stationary at the minute. Same colour helicopter. I'm not quite sure it's the same sort of it, but it looks the same. So that's the beat job all finished and we're just clearing up the beat pad up here and Tom and Reuben are just clearing the soil away, cleaning the cleaner down and we're going to take it down to the other farm and uh, it'll stay there and we'll put it on the, on the grass margin and start it up in a week or two and it will have some more soil drop off it then we'll wash it and uh, it will go into the workshop and do some bits to it, engine filter change and rollers and bits of stuff like that ready for next season. So yeah, please this, uh, this season's sugar beet is, is over with because it's not been an easy, uh, easy year at all for the crop. So this is just some of the soil that's, that's come out from the cleaner. So they've been up and cleaned all off that uh, shelf there, that white ledge, that cream ledge, because all the tops stick to that. The chain that's hanging down there, that's so the lorries, when they drive under, they know where to drive the side of the lorry for the top of the elevator in the middle of the trailer. So just moving it out of the way, then all that soil, which is great this time of year, we just spread it on the field that it's come from. Remember, because I've just mentioned um, earlier in the video about violet root rot. So this is the soil, this is the stuff that comes out from the cleaner. The cleaner loader there is spread all over the field. There's little bits of heaps all over the field. And then when Tom solos it, you can see them all there from um, last week when we were loading. So then when Tom solos it, all that will just be soloed and mixed in with the soil. And be very, very careful not to put stuff from one uh, field or soil from one field like that heap there, we're careful, we definitely won't put it into the field either side of the hedge there, because that is going to sugar beet next year. So yeah, this is just what we're doing, just clearing up, and that's the end of sugar beet for year 22, 23. Just imagine if we didn't have that cleaner loader there to uh, to help take this soil out all that would be in the factory and then we'd get heavily penalized for it because the more soil you take in the less money you get for the loads of beet so here we are just spreading it out So we're on the edge of this new concrete now, which is brilliant. Made so much difference to the job. Just cleaning it and scraping all the soil off. We're down to the field. Yeah, you can see the tall of the new concrete here. We put three five uh, meter bays in. So the edge of it was here. This is where the edge of it is. So yeah, right through there. That's all new and that's the old, so it made a big difference. Yeah, we've just been talking about these linseed bales. Uh, not Some of them are all right, but a lot of them, the strings have gone like that one. There's only half the strings on the bale. That one, there's virtually no strings on it at all. These have toppled over. So we're just thinking we need to get rid of these. We'll probably burn them. And uh, that's maybe not a bad one there. And then start with a fresh load next year. Um, we could do with probably 70 or 80 uh, the big Heston linseed bales. If anybody knows 
where we've got that many. We'll fetch them with the trailer as long as it's within reasonable distance. Then that will be good for next year's beet heap to start again. We're just going to take this down to the main farm now. That's on. Yeah. Not too bad, considering what it has been like on the after the sugar beet on the on the heavy soil. You can see the chains aren't too bad. The soil, but a lot of the rollers there. You can just see there's a roller there. Some of them seize up. We need to change them. That one there. Sometimes the big sprocket at the top needs to change. So we're just going to lower this elevator now. Now for travelling it down on the road. Just flick it on the tap. There we go. That's about it. It. It's a few years old this, I don't know, probably 30 years old, but it still does a really good job. So just looking at this Manitou, we really like this. It's a uh, um, 9 metre, 4 tonne, and obviously got two straight loads. Yeah, we really like it. We've had three or four of these now over the years, and uh, yeah, something about it we just like. Except, saying that, it is. Uh, it needs a new gearbox because it lurches on the road, saying that now. I've just remembered, I've got a call from our Manitou dealer to say that uh, um, they've agreed Manitou have to fit a new gearbox in it because when you're going down the road, it should limit it to 25 miles an hour and uh, it surges, it goes up to 26, 27, drops to 23, then up again and down again and up and down and it's surging all the way. So they're going to fit another gearbox in it, which uh, is incredible. I think they're 16 or 18,000 pounds. So yeah, that's um, that's history of this Manitou, but apart from that, we do like it, but we're not having to pay for it, so that, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's lucky. That's it, off to the other farm, we, Ruben goes with it. Another one of our farm tracks that wants doing up with the planings we've got, so we've got a lot of work on this uh, summer when the weather picks up, covering all these tracks with, uh, with tarmac planings. Bit of a sad time for me because this is the house where I was uh, brought up in and uh, my parents died a few years ago. My mother died in 2015. Uh, my father died uh, just over two years ago. And uh, this house goes with the farm that I rent. So the 400 acres uh, that I've got an agricultural holdings that tenancy on, this house is the farmhouse. Now the village of Lednam, which you can see here all behind me and is on the hilltop here, the Lincoln Edges it's called. Um, there's six farms and every farm has a house uh, that goes with it and it all belongs Lednam Estate. This is the house that belongs to the farm that I'm tenant of and uh, I've taken it out of the tenancy because uh, I didn't want to live here and we'll, uh, Rhonda and I, as you know, are moving into the other house at the, at the main farm when we finish it. So um, and we're currently living in one of the other cottages that also goes with the farm that, uh, that I rent. So this house now um, has been sold, so we've had to clear it all out and um, just empty it totally, which has been, it's just sad because I've lived here literally from the day I was born. Fantastic place. And uh, I'll just turn the camera around. You can just see the scenery because it's, it's right on the hilltop here and uh, hilltop of the village looking out over the farm. So this is the house. I've just opened one of the gates out onto the road into the village. It's the first house you come to really when you come up the hill, you can see there, and that's the land that we farm all that where those green fields are coming up into the village. We've got George Hotel and the, uh, the pub there, but it's closed at the minute. It closed about probably again two years ago. So this is the village. Then there's another entrance out of the house um, into around the corner there, down the uh, main street. I'll just quickly go around here. So this is the other entrance out down to the high street. You can just see down there. So yeah, this is the front of the house. Lovely, nice, big house. Big, tall rooms. We'll go in in a minute, those of you interested. Those of you who aren't, just skip on. But when you look at the view down here, this is why it's, it was widely known as one of the best houses in the village because of the view. But there are some other houses along this cliff edge as well. But if you look down there at the view down that hill, and that is our main farm. You can just see in the distance of so that shed. That is the main farm, so it looks out onto it. So it's always been good. And the hills you can see in the very distance, you can just see something in the di very distance through the mist, that's the Derbyshire Pennines. Probably 50, 60 miles away, I'm not quite sure. 
something like that and then through into the garden here obviously the lawn hasn't been cut for a while looking a bit unkept but the garden a bit sad really because mother used to look after this garden unbelievably it was a fantastic garden tennis court here and again there's the views out and then here's the front of the house lots and lots of happy memories so yeah here's the kitchen then what we called the back kitchen father's office you used to have this we called this a breakfast room but it was really the living room hallway dining room lovely lovely tall ceilings and lounge stunning views out that french window down the hill and then upstairs lovely hall great big skylight you can see there and into my brother's room and um my brother was called michael and he died in 1988 when he was 32 he got cancer and uh, yeah he died when he was 28 sorry he died when he was 32 i was 28 when he died um yeah, and here is the snooker table that i'm moving down into the house when we get it built We've got a company coming from sheffield to take it away because the cushions are gone and these new cushions and these re-clothing as well but lovely lovely table so we're going to take this down into the new house and then through here got the bathroom yeah the ceiling's just started to come down you can see because of the damp but there'll be somebody moving in here really shortly because they're moving in any day i'm going to be doing it up while they're in here this is my sister's bedroom and big spare room parents room fantastic views looking out over the, the lincoln cliff edges it's called look through there fantastic views and then the last room but the most important mine and this was my little bedroom again i had great views out over the hill looking out all over the farm as well we don't farm this land in front of us so the land you can just see here isn't ours it belongs to Ledham estate but it's farmed by another tenant one of my neighbors so yeah so this is the house i was born and well not born but i was brought up in so yeah this is the house i was brought up in lived here all my life um until i got married and then when i got divorced uh, i moved back here uh, for a few years um, until I moved up to the up to the other farm. So sad times, but we all uh, move on. But um, luckily, it's got somebody coming in it any day, and uh, it'll hopefully be taken care of yet again and have a lot of renovation work done on it. So I might come around here and update you on on that. It, I think it'll be good to just see it. And oh, and I'll just turn the camera around again because we have got a range of outbuildings. Two garages there, another garage there, dog kennel dog pen there, and then another whole load of range of buildings here. Garages there, and I used to years ago up the top there used to have guinea pigs up there. I used to rear and sell guinea pigs for pocket money. Garden shed down here, and all this could be made into a really good house. And we actually used to, when we used to grow potatoes, we used to chit potatoes in here. So you can see these runners up here, we used to have strip lights hanging down here and put all boxes of potatoes. And that's little chitting trays, sorry, not big boxes. So yeah, this could make a good uh, place as well, but it's just unfortunate it's really near the house to actually build it and sell it off as another, as another house or someone else. But anyway, this is, uh, and here's the tennis court. They've been doing a bit of repairs and, or rather hedge cutting to make it saleable which it now is so that's great oh and veg garden here so i forgot that greenhouse there and a nice big veg garden as well so you can just see a lot of potential here fantastic views looking out towards nottingshire over the trent valley that's known as reuben and tom are just servicing the sprayer got the beet seed arrived there's enough there for about 140 acres we're all one variety um this year and you can see it says cruise force that means it's near nicotinoid treated we'll explain about that when we plant the crop and get it in the machine and there's four boxes in there and uh 
each one of those boxes does and we use 1.2 boxes per hectare so there's four boxes in there but i'll explain that more when we're drilling but so that's a, that's that's a please that's come but yeah so reuben tom are doing the sprayer which we wouldn't have had to do if the new sprayer had arrived which it's still a few weeks away so i'm just now um heading off to lincoln to birchwood school this is one of the schools in lincoln i've been helping and working with for the past year and uh, it's the one I helped with the schools challenge and we've had some children from there on the farm. So I've got the fast track, I'm going with the fast track as well so they look at that. And then I've got um, various crops in here. I've got some wheat in that one, also drape, oats, uh, barley and beans in that one. And I've also got there some food, various things, got some bread to show them and talk to them where the food comes from, some white bread some brown there which that actually has got barley in it it's seeded barley and wheat and is it oats as well i think and i've got oil as well because that even though it says it's vegetable oil that is actually rapeseed oil so a lot of things there and a few sweets as well like that kit kat because that that actually has wheat in it so yeah anyway i'm going to crack on to school now It'll take me about 40 minutes to drive her there in this fast track and uh, we'll get to the school and uh, have a great couple of hours with the children I've just arrived at the school in Lincoln. It took me about probably 35 minutes to get here. So not too bad, it's on uh, my side of Lincoln. So that's good, here's the school behind me. So I'm just gonna unpack uh, the boxes of food that you've just seen, put them on uh, on these tables just here under this canopy and leave the tractor here. I'm gonna split up into different groups. Some of them will look around the tractor and jump in the cab and have a look inside while I'm talking to other groups about the food. So we're gonna get set up and the first lot of children will be out shortly. Yeah. We've just looked at all the crops and what they are. We're going to ask you now to see what's in these boxes. So this one, what's in there? Shout out. Weed. Yeah, this one. Rape or oil. Rape or oil seed rape, correct. This one. Barley. Yes, well done. This one. Yes. And this one. Weed. Now, can you remember what makes, what would they go to make? So this loaf of bread and that loaf of bread. Two different breads. What's those made from? Shout. Yeah. And what's in this loaf as well? Besides wheat, there's something else. What have we said? Yes. What's that? Barley. Yeah. And something else? And barley. barley. Yes. And? Oats. Well done. Those as well. Now, who likes jammy dodgers? Yeah. I do. What do you think is in jammy dodgers? Yes, well done. And that's all really here. Now, I'm not going to ask you who likes that, but I bet your dads do. <laughs> so, what crop here makes this? Any idea? Shout. Yes, well done. You're remembering very well. And there's one other drink, remember, that's made from barley. Yeah? Whiskey. That's right. I don't like whiskey, but yes, whiskey is. And we've got... Uh, here, breakfast cereals, all those. Yep, what do you think? Wheat. Wheat. And also, there's something oh. else. Oh. Yes, and another one. Barley. Believe it or not, Special K, which is one of these somewhere, but not many people, not many children like Special K. Special K has actually got a lot of barley in it. So that's that one. And what else have we got here? Oats, of course. Oh. Yeah, oats. That's made from oats naturally. And now this oil, it says vegetable oil, but what's made, that's it. What is this? Rape oil. oil. And remember when you're in the supermarket shopping with your mum and dad to look and always look for rape oil because it is better than any other oil you can get. Okay, brilliant. Any questions? So we're now showing the group the tractor and they're all having a, gonna have a sit in it. We brought the fast track today because some of the school hasn't got a huge amount of room. You can see the car park there, so that's why it's easier coming with a smaller tractor. Great doing it. I love it. It's fantastic. I get so much from it, and also the children really enjoy it as well. And they don't get this opportunity very often, and they come around the farm as well. This group will do in a few weeks' time, so it's great. So I'm now in the nature area at school that they've got amongst all these trees here and we're planting various trees that have been donated by... Who donated the trees? Wood, Woodland Trust. 
Yeah, so the Woodland Trust donated the trees. So we're going to just have a look at these, what they're planting here. But all this area is a wildlife area. And they have got here somewhere. Where's your camera? Here we go. Got a wildlife camera there. So they're having a look at that. So we'll just see them planting these trees. Right, which ones? What have you just planted? We're just planting these. And I've just yeah. told them that they need to be yeah. make sure they're, they're firm. But these are only in here for a few days. They need moving and spacing further apart. Like this one. That one, deep, yeah, it needs. Yeah. You're quite right. It needs to be deep. Look at that. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, right. make sure you do that and and uh, firm it in properly. <laughs> well done. This road up here near where uh, where I live is notorious for potholes, and the council the last two or three days have repaired some big ones just here. Done. Yeah, good job there. Put tar around the edges, sealed the edges. Great job. Except you come to here, and all they've done thrown a shovel full of tarmac in there a cup full in that one a cup full in there a shovel full in there a shovel full in there and there and repaired that one properly sort of but what makes you when you look at that got a nice edge there why didn't they incorporate that into this repair here because that will be out in the next three or four weeks that will be a big hole just crazy that all these bodge jobs one there and they're doing this junction and they're doing this road about twice a year for the last five years they've been doing it it's just crazy and there's another big one up here we'll have a look at that in a minute when we get there so here we go here's the one that i've just shown you further up the road and that's where we've just come from i think the companies they get to do it are called bodget and scarpa just driving down the farm track the sheep are looking content in the paddock here and we've got a nice big fat Cop pheasant. Look at that. Tame as anything. That's it for this update. Hope you've enjoyed it. Been a few varying things going on. Thank you very much for watching and all being well, we'll see you midweek.